lot of you fish the Frenchie and you know how good it can be. We're going to kick it up to 11 with some Picric. So you're probably familiar with the Frenchie. What I've done here is I've just tweaked a couple things. I really like the Picric dyed materials. I think they're extremely fishy and I like a soft tackle. So what's not to love? <clears throat> anyway, I've got my hook, just a jig hook. This is a Hannock 400 and a 16. You could use a Firehole 516 or you could use uh, the Fulling Mill. I do have a Fulling Mill bead on here. And uh, with the slotted beads, you just need to make sure that it's that's upside down. You twist it and now you can tell it's right side up because it will uh, suck down against the eye of the hook. And then when you take your thread, you can actually just kind of peg it against that eye of the hook down the neck section of the hook there. So yeah, just a few wraps there will get that stuck in place. Keep that out of your way. <clears throat> now I'm grabbing my wire. I use copper, you can use gold, or you could even use silver. And then I just make that go along the entire length. I try to keep it on the side away from me because then I can keep it out of the way when I tie my other materials in. So just like that. And now I'm going to use some legit Coque de Leon. This says Association of Fighting Chickens. No, it says Criadores, Growers of, of uh, Chickens of Leon, Gajo, Rooster. <clears throat> so this is a good little, these are from Spain. Um, I'm gonna take four or five of these fibers here. And I want them about the body length. So kind of measure that out. And I tie them in on the side closest to me, and that way any additional wraps can kind of push those up and over the top. And then if you don't tighten it as much, you can actually shorten these up and get them to length like you want them to. That looks about right. I'm going to leave that in there. I'm going to tie in my pheasant tail. And this is the Semper Fly. Picric dyed pheasant. So <clears throat> there is something about pheasant tail, hands down. There's also something about this picric dye. So you put those two together, and that's just like should be illegal. Maybe not. So I'll grab four to six fibers, just depending on the size of bug I'm tying. And you tie these in at the tip first. And I want these, the very tips are pretty weak, so I, I'll tie these in again so that the taper can go uh, the whole length of the body. And then I just create my wrap back up. And if you're careful, you can just kind of guide the fibers up over, or the thread up over the fibers. And then if you do have some tag ends at the end, you can just snip them. except for one that escaped. There we go. <coughs> All right, being that it is pheasant tail, it's not the most durable. So we're gonna grab some Zement, specially formulated from Zappa Gap and the people at Wapsi. Lay enough on there to sit on the thread wraps. <coughs> and I let that soak for a couple seconds just so it can kind of work its way down into the thread. I'm also not going to use the bobbin cradle and since I'm going to backward wrap these or counter wrap the fibers I'm going to throw in a few more wraps of thread because this will unwind. And then I'm going to use two hackle pliers. First for the pheasant and the hackle I'm going to use my trusty CNF fancy cushion, nice comfortable ring. But I also love these Stomfos because these guys have little jaws that will hold the wire. So I use this one for wire, this one for the feathers. 
You can use either or or none of them. You could use your fingers. But I'm going to <coughs> wrap the pheasant tails against the grain, which means the opposite of the way the thread was wrapped. So I grasp those and I'm rolling the vise rotary motion away from me, <clears throat> keeping that at an angle. So you can see those picric uh, die coming in through in the fibers there. And then as you get right behind the bead, <clears throat> keep tension on the hackle pliers. Do a wrap around and then a wrap in front, another wrap behind and a wrap in front. <clears throat> that will lock those in because if you're not careful, that will get away from you because you've, you're basically going against the direction of the thread. And super sharp scissors to trim that. Now I <clears throat> just want a regular wrap, which is counter to the pheasant tail, I guess. The wire. <clears throat> and so that one I go towards me. And you keep that at an angle as well. <clears throat> now my thread here is doing things I don't want it to. So I can keep that out of the way with my pinky. My pinky cradle. And then I want to wrap that right up until just behind the bead. Secure that in. Tightly kind of bend the wire. And then small helicopters will get that <clears throat> snapped off. And that's where we're going to tie everything else in. So both the hackle and the dubbing is going to be tied in that small little space there. My hackle is some Brahma hen cape. The beauty of hen capes is that you can get some really small size 16 hackle out of this. And this is a soft hackle. I want this to be about the body length or to extend just beyond the body. So I pick out a, a hackle that's going to do the job for me and you kind of just eyeball that based off of how you want those to lie down and that's about right. And then I take the feather and I want to look at the curvature of the feather. So I want the colorful side which is on top and I'm going to pull away, strip away the hackle fibers that are on the opposite side of me. And to do that you just pull those out strip them and then I also strip out the fuzzy fibers and I'm left with just something like that that I can then tie in right behind the bead so you can see there the stem will wrap against the body and then a couple more wraps in front to lock that in and then again sh you really want sharp scissors to do this I don't rip off the bases on these ones the stems because it's too sketchy and now you want some good hackle pliers because these are almost impossible to do with your fingers and this will give us about two maybe three wraps and again we're only doing one side of the hackle so it's not going to be overly done like so and then do a wrap in front of the hackle and then we can just go yoink hackle gone you gotta hold your thread when you do that otherwise the stuff might rip out okay now all the hackle fibers are almost perpendicular they won't be that way for long because they're gonna go up, up against the body we're gonna put on our thorax and that thorax is gonna push them back so the thorax uses two materials, eye stub peacock and hairy eye stub in peacock. They're different colors. The hairy eye stub is a lot softer. And this is, uh, has some stiffer, longer materials, fibers in it. So I kind of use the both of them to get the color and the consistency I want. And I just mix them 50-50. You take one bag of each, you mix that, and that becomes your awesome new favorite thorax material. So I'm going to put in just a little bit of this. You don't need much. And if you have trouble getting it to adhere because this peacock eye stub 
is notorious for not adhering well, uh, you can use some dubbing wax. And now if you get those in there and then you can just preen those back and take your wraps in front a little too much there but that's what we're looking at and now we'll just whip finish that guy throw in a few more wraps to fill the gap but there we go that is a Picric Frenchy soft tackle style so you've got pheasant tail you've got Picric color pheasant tail you've got a soft tackle and you've got some ice stub that that checks all the boxes. So there you go. You've got Coke de Leon, Super Fishy, Pheasant Tail, Mega Fishy, Soft Tackle, which is good, the Picric Dyed Pheasant Tail, and some Ice Dub in the Thorax with a pink bead. I don't think you can go wrong with this one. Give it a try.